Thank you for joining us this evening for the May uh, 3rd, 2023 Montezuma Site and Architectural Commission regular meeting. Before the meeting is called to order, I would like to point out a few house rules to assist the commissioners, staff, and members of the public to successfully participate in this meeting. For tonight's meeting, Zoom is being, is being used to allow participation with the Site and Architectural uh, Commission regular meeting. For those using Zoom to participate, there are two icons, chat and raise hand. Please use chat only to report technical issues such as being unable to hear a commissioner speaking. Please use raise hand to be recognized by the chair and unable to speak to the commission. Only attendees using Zoom application can use the raise hand option to comment. Participants calling in from a telephone will only be able to listen and cannot provide feedback or public comment. And lastly, when we're not all in the same room, all votes in the meeting must be taken by roll call. Thank you, City Clerk. With that, I'd like to call to order the May 3rd, 2023 meeting of the Montesarino Site and Architectural Commission. City Planner Kirkham, would you like to proceed with a roll call? Yes, thank you. Commissioner Van Supermanian? Present. Commissioner Carmen? Here. Commissioner Sprint Sauber is not here. Commissioner White? Present. Chair Zeitler? Present. Um, and we, do we need to? I guess we're not going to check in with Shalane. Who's just absent. So, okay, we'll proceed then with the orders of the day. First, we have a chance for members of the public to speak to anything not agendized. You'll have three minutes to speak. Raise your hand if you would like to speak to anything not on the agenda. Do we have? There's no one online. No one online with the virtual hand. Okay. Um, so we none. I'll close live public comment. Um, did we receive any oral communications in advance of the meeting? Diana? Or written? We did receive two written communications um, on Monday, and both of those were published online and distributed to the commission. Wonderful. Okay, let's move on then to uh, um, reviewing the minutes from the April 5th meeting. Has everyone had a chance to look at those? Yeah. Would anyone have any comments? I move the approval of the minutes. I'll second. So before, sorry, before your motion, we need to open up the comments. Oh, that's right. Any <laughs> any comments on the meeting minutes from the last meeting? There are no answers. Right. Okay, right. seeing so that, I'll close public comment on those. I move the um, approval of the minutes. I will second. Excellent. Please proceed with a roll call vote. Commissioner Van Supermania? In favor. Commissioner Conley? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. Chair Seidler? Yes. Okay, let's move now to the public hearing aspect of the meeting. Um, item one, or we, we did the minutes, now we're moving on to the project um, first, actual property project. Would you like to present that one? Thank you. Um, this is an application for a revision to a previously approved site development permit for a new house at 16005 Greenwood Lane. The new house at the site was originally approved by the city council on November 17, 2020. The current property owner had submitted a modification to the exterior elevations um, and roof design, which was approved at the June 1st, 2022 Site and Architectural Commission meeting. Um, at that meeting, the commission also required the property owner to um, return with modification to the front yard grading, retaining walls, and stairs. And that is the application that is before you tonight. The proposed revisions include um, some changes to the front yard grading to raise the height of the grade and reduce the height of the front yard retaining walls. Um, the visual effect of these changes is shown on sheets A 3.1A and A 3.1B of the proposed plans that are attached to the staff report for tonight's meeting. Um, other changes include revisions to the stairs at the main entrance. Um, to eliminate the straight run of stairs that was that is currently located um, right front um, aligned with the front door of the house and the stairs are proposed to be redesigned to the right side of the house um, and to connect to the driveway um, and this will also reduce um, the overall number of stairs as well as um, the visual presence of the stairs from the street. Um, part of these revisions tonight also include changes to landscape plans to reflect the, the other proposed changes to the front yard. 
Um, the number of new trees um, proposed at the site has been reduced from 27 with the previous, I'm sorry, 227. The previous approval included a total of 35 new trees. Um, the original application um, that was approved by the city council um, required a minimum of 19 um, replacement trees. And so um, those are, the current proposal does um, still meet that requirement, um, even though the overall number of trees are reduced. Um, that completes the staff report. Oh, I'm sorry, staff recommends that the Site and Architectural Commission approve the proposed site development permit modifications in accordance with the memorandum of decision attached to the staff report. And that concludes the staff report, and I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Commissioners, do you have any questions for Ms. Perkin? I do. Ms. Perkin, remind me, I've been, I think I've seen this, it's the third time this project's been before us. So originally, we made a recommendation to the city council. Uh, why is it that we're not, again, revisiting a recommendation as opposed to an approval of a modification? So the modification that was approved last year was um, approved by the Site and Architectural Commission. That did not continue to City Council. Um, the original approval of the project um, occurred um, before mm -hmm. I was working here. From what I understand from the history is that it was appealed to the City Council. Okay, and that's why, and we, that's why we need a recommendation was. only as opposed to a standard review process. That's my understanding. Okay, thank you. Okay, I, I had a question that I reached out to you, you know, as staff before the meeting about um, with the additional soil proposed to be brought in, um, what review we would have to make sure that that soil stayed in place, basically. Would you mind speaking to that a little bit? Um, sure, I did confirm with the city engineer and um, this is what the city's typical practice is um, for this type of a project would be that at the time, if the revisions were approved tonight, um, at the time of the building permit submittal, um, the grading plans would need to be designed by a licensed um, civil engineer or landscape architect. And the, um, that would include the um, requirements or recommendations of how to compact um, the soil that's brought in. Um, that analysis would also um, involve the project soils engineer. Um, there was a soils report with the original project with these revisions, again, assuming they were approved and submitted for a building permit, the soils engineer would also have to provide an update to their report to address this additional um, fill that is, would be brought in. Um, during construction, the um, and again, the city engineer would require that during construction, the civil engineer be on site to observe the um, compaction of the soil and to provide a final letter of conformance um, prior to our final building inspection. Thank you. Does anyone have any other questions before we open to the applicant? Sorry, do you have a couple? <laughs> um, in some of the comments that we received in advance of the meeting, there is a suggestion that the size of the trees be changed from a 24-inch box to 48-inch box. Do we have the authority to require that of the applicant? So the replacement tree requirement um, is a policy. The 24-inch box size is standard that we use as a policy. There isn't a specific um, size requirement in the zoning code. So um, it is could be at the discretion of a commission if, if you would like larger trees. So, the, so yes, we could insist on larger trees if that were the case. Okay, yes. and then um, is it also possible for us to require that the landscaping be completed before uh, final sign off on the project as a condition? Yes, that is our typical practice, but to emphasize the, the desire of the commission, you could certainly add that as a condition also. Very good. Thank you. Would the applicant like to speak in support of the project? Sure. <laughs> I need to go up there. 
just they can hear you on Zoom. Otherwise, sure. Sorry. Uh, so we went back after the June meeting and talked to the neighbors, talked to uh, Mr. Jeans, and uh, jointly designed the retaining walls and eliminated. And I think everyone was very happy with that design. Uh, we sent the design back to our our uh, arborist, and he modified the plan as best as he thought would suit the site. We didn't tell him to eliminate any trees. Uh, that wasn't I didn't know about that till. I just read the, some of the comments. That wasn't our goal. It, we just left it up to him to kind of figure out where he thought the trees best were to go. Uh, and Tony pointed out to me that some of them are in conflict with some of the existing trees. So of course we will place those you know, with his di discretion and put them out there. Um, so uh, I think we've accomplished everything that we were trying to get from last meeting. And I think it was, it's a pretty good sign. Let's uh, hold on for a second because we we're gonna ask you some questions as well. Sure. Sorry. So talk to me about a little bit about this suggestion that you use larger size from 24 inch to 48 inch box trees. What kind of a burden does that impose on you? Uh I mean it's not a big burden. There is a significant cost increase to go from a 24 to a 48. Sure. We have had some of our arborists tell us that 48 inch trees don't transplant as well as the younger trees. The younger trees have a propensity to grow quicker, uh, sooner than when they put them in the ground. Um, there is a 36 inch box that we can do as well uh, as a happy medium. Uh, so I, I, you know, I kind of leave it up to our arborist who knows what trees do better planted in the soil. Uh, but you know, there, it's not a big deal for us. Right. And what's the net economic effect of these proposed changes on you? It, 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 I, you have to bring in certainly more soil, but you're creating fewer walls. Um, it's probably a net wash. I mean, we're probably benefiting a little bit from it, from eliminating the stone that was going to go on the walls. Yeah. But doing this much earthwork is is a quite a big uh, undertaking. We will have a soils engineer there the full time. I mean, we don't want any subsistence of that hill coming down. So we'll over excavate the bottom of it, toe in the soil, layer it in in compaction, you know, six inch lifts as we go up and do soil compaction tests every single day. And it'll probably take us, you know, three, four weeks of just doing soil operations. Correct. So it is quite a, a lengthy process bringing in the soil. But I do think it's a much better design. I think the design is by far way better than the huge stairs. Right. So uh, I haven't done a cost analysis of which one. I would assume it's going to be close to a push, but it's a much better product. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for that again? Thank you. Thank you. And would any members of the public like to speak? Um, I'm uh, Paul Crowler. I live next door to the property. And um, so I'd like to say, number one, that the existing management here has been way easier to work with than the previous. I think we'd all agree to that. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate the way we were consulted on the changes that they wanted to make, and I thought all of them were good changes. If there's any kind of approval I need to give, I would like to approve this grading. It's, look, it's a really big house. It looks big on paper. It looks even bigger in reality. It's a monster. But I think the, the plan that we're doing with the grading of the earth is the way to go. It's the best you're going to do, I think, to soften it. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up was I don't like the confusion that has existed for three years now on the address of this property. Okay, Maybe at the very beginning, long before JT came along, maybe it was thought that the entrance would be on Greenwood Lane. And maybe it was given some kind of Greenwood Lane parcel number thing, I don't know. But you can see the way it is now. I mean, the the the, the, the driveway and the front entrance, the, the, well, front entrance faces Greenwood Road and the driveway comes out on Greenwood Road. So it should be Greenwood Road. And the, it's not just a paper thing for me. It's a little bit more to it than that, because I think that um, if it's on Greenwood Road, 
you won't get people coming down, you know, they've been told it's Greenwood Lane and they're driving down Greenwood Road and, you know, they can't find the place, right? Or you could, for example, have mail people that want to deliver mail to, they're told it's Greenwood Lane and they've gone by it and they've gone up Greenwood Lane and guess who will get their mail? Me, because I'm like the first house up on Greenwood Lane. So, uh, and, you know, well, there's another reason. Um, I think that the way the current rules stand in Monte Serena, you're not allowed to put an ADU between the street and the residence. I think there's some kind of rule about that. And I think that I would not like to see some ADU be built, not by JT, but by some future owner. I wouldn't like to see some ADU be plonked in between Greenwood Road and the house. Wouldn't like that. It should be tucked. If it was going to happen, it should be tucked away. So anyhow, for all of these reasons, I really would like to see the address corrected to Greenwood Road. And there's a lot of documentation that says it one way and says it the other way. So let's get it fixed, you know. Um, thank you. Thank you thank very you. much. Before we open to further public comments, Ms. Perkins, is there anything the city can do to clarify the address? We do have um, a process where a property owner can request an address to be changed. Um, the city generally doesn't mandate an address change on a property owner, but if the owner were to um, submit an application, there is a fee involved with that. Um, we, we could certainly look at the address change. Mm -hmm. But do we get to decide that yeah. as yeah. site and architecture commissioners, yeah. or yeah. does that come outside the purview? Yes, that is a staff. We don't decide that. That's correct. Yeah. Ms. Perkins. Do we have the ability at the city, the legal authorization to change an address or is it the county assessor? So um, the city does assign addresses and then through the process of assigning or changing an address, there are um, quite an extensive list of agencies that we notify of the address change, but it is um, an administrative process with the city that, that we do have the authority to assign addresses or change addresses. So it's not within the commission's purview to make those changes. If we granted the uh, gentleman's request and said, hey, let's change this to wherever he wants it to be, that's not within our authority to. Um, I don't believe so. I believe um, that would need to be a, a request made up by the property owner. OK. Because we can help when we will, but we can't. So it's maybe outside the scope for us? I believe so. I believe so. That's my um, would anyone else from the public like to speak? My name is Pam. I live with Paul, my husband, um, behind that property. And I would like to say thank you again for making our lives a little bit easier and less stressful. Um, and uh, your builders have been very respectful to the hours also, which is nice. Um, so my concern is um, nothing to do with the grading at all. It's about the turnout on Greenwood Lane. As you know, Greenwood Lane is a private road and it's like crumbling into the creek and it's, <laughs> it's very small. And in the mornings and the evenings, there's a lot of trucks, construction, just people going to work and school. There's more and more houses being built up the hill and ADUs being added. So there's more and more volume on that little road. At the bottom, there's a dirt turnout at the moment, which for decades has been, everybody uses it to let the next person come down because the road is very skinny there. Um, and it gets skinnier as you go towards our house. When we built our house, we were asked to widen the road from a very small, like maybe 12 foot road to 20 feet. So we did, and I'm asking the same, that at that junction, they did put in a turnout on some of the plans, but not all of the plans. Um, is it on a landscape plan? It's on the landscape. It's on the landscape, on the right. 
And so I just want to make sure that that gets done. And also the um, the turnout that's designated right now, I can't really tell how big it is, but it doesn't look big enough to me uh, to really allow for traffic flow. And I'm, I'm mostly concerned about fire and emergency um, egress and access. We have had a few fires up Greenwood Lane. Uh, a few years ago, there was a fire on Lucky Road. And there was a night that was very scary. People were coming down, big fire trucks were going up, and there was no way for cars to pass. And I keep thinking of the Oakland Shoals fire. So um, it's bad enough that, you know, we're, we're just dealing with the way the road is. But if we can make it um, the turnout wider and longer, um, I don't think it'll really chew into your land very much. And I, the neighbors would really appreciate it. So that's my, that's all I want to say about that. Um, as far as the address, again, for emergencies, if you call 911, the call will come from 16005 Greenwood Lane. The fire trucks will go screaming past the house or the EMTs or the police, and they'll go right up Greenwood Lane, and they'll go, where's the driveway? And there's a vineyard. Um, so I think it's important that we do change the address for so many reasons, and that's just Aside from all the other things, that's my concern. And I yield any remaining time to my friend Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, uh, uh, yes, Brenda Jean. Um, so I worked with the owner a lot, and I think they've done a really good job. Um, to get into the history briefly, because you had the question at the very beginning. Um, you rejected, the Site and Architecture Commission rejected this project. And it was appealed. Town Council approved it over your uh, rejection. And consequently, we have the situation that we have now, which is Montrose retaining walls. The uh, front door is 11 feet up in the air. And where do you go? And um, the, the new owner has done a, a good job in putting grading at the front, which is not really within the design guidelines, but if you look at the whole project, it ultimately gets it back to being within the design guidelines because it will soften everything. Um, you've got uh, about eight or nine feet of fill in the deep point. What they're doing with this fill uh, is layering it in. It, it, if it's done properly, which it should be because it's on a very visible corner, um, it'll go in well, it won't go anywhere. It will be difficult to plant on it. Um, so the landscape people will have the difficult job, but that's that follows. Um, um, so from a grading perspective, what it does is it reduces an 11 foot retaining wall down to a visible two foot retaining wall if you look at the plan, okay? Um, the, um, the landscape plan has a, a few little issues that I think can easily be fixed. Uh, one is by putting on the trees that are really there. There are some trees that aren't identified, like trees number five and six and 10 and 11 aren't shown on the plans. Um, so if you put those on the plans, then you'll realize that the location of the proposed trees uh, for planting need to be moved to better locations. And I did mark up one that just had a few suggestions, but that's up to the landscape people to come up with better ideas. <clears throat> there is a section between the two areas of mature trees on Greenwood Road at the front and Greenwood Lane at the front in the middle, where I think the six trees that are pulled on the landscape plan Quercus agrifolia, California live oak, but on the table, Quercus virginiana, which is a southern oak, which is a faster growing oak tree, which is probably better. If you use that, um, I still think a larger tree would be better. Um, if you use the Quercus virginiana, uh, perhaps you can get away with a 36 inch box. But I think if you take those six trees and plant them judiciously spaced around that, area um, between the two um, 
mature tree sections, then you could probably get some growth within about 10 years that might start to screen the house. Um, the growth from a 36 inch box to a 48 inch box is one year. It's one year's growth. So you gain a year, but ultimately it grows a little more quickly. Um, I think uh, there are a couple of trees that you may want to consider putting at the back, uh, which I noted on the landscape plan because the fellow who purchased the property behind um, had, there were trees taken out there that were mature. Um, and I think some coverage there would be good. Um, I think um, the key things then are um, the turnout, approve it, um, redo the landscape plan. It doesn't need really to come to you unless you want to see it. It needs to go to Diana um, just to make sure that it's done in accordance with whatever you think should be specified. Um, I think uh, those were the main uh, points that I put in the letter that I didn't review today because I didn't have much time. So if there's anything that I've forgotten, please go ahead and ask me. Um, I was here when the original house was denied by you, which I applauded. Um, I, I think this will help significantly um, blend it in and make it much a much better project. And I lord the uh, owner for doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, would you, the applicant, would you, what, I'm sorry, what's your last name? I should know it. Uh, JT Matteringas. Matteringas, Mr. Matteringas. Would you um, be able to speak to us a little bit about the turnout and um, what the current intention is on that? Because it sounds like um, treatment of it varies a little on the plans. Yeah, uh, after talking to all of them, we did have it put down on our drawing to leave a, a you know, not a gigantic swath, but we were thinking maybe, you know, eight foot wide by 25 feet long, enough for a large, you know, like a Amazon truck to pull over and let somebody pass through. So we did, it was our intent to have it in the drawings. And okay. I think it reflects on the landscape plan, but maybe my civil mystic, but it is our intention of doing it. Are you also intending to put like, Curve. Well, there's nothing down there now for a curb, so we really just kind of match the existing and roll it into the landscaping. Am I allowed to say? Are there any? Are there any other public comments? Yes. Any online or? <laughs> you want to hear another minute? Let's so keep it to three minutes okay. per person. We've been a little bit loosey goosey, but did, did you? I just want to say. Um, at least I think it needs to be long enough for a fire truck, you know, for a large CDF or uh, Los Gatos, Monte Serena fire or Saratoga. It's, it's I think 25 feet is a little bit short because also there's often more than one car trying to pull over to let other cars come. So I think it needs to be a little bit. My, that's it. Okay. That's all I'm missing. Right. With that, I'll uh, close public comment then and bring it back to the commission. Who would like to go first? Um, as the uh, many people from the public commented, uh, JT, I salute you. Thank you for this. Was an ugly, ugly application the first time around, and this, the room was full and it was contentious. And um, bringing back harmony in that community and that neighborhood, I think, is um, something to be applauded lately. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, there is the discrepancy in relationship to the landscape plan and the civil engineering drawings uh, with respect to this carve out. Um, the applicant has committed to creating the card about. Um, Ms. Perkins, doesn't the fire department review um, these applications as well in relationship to satisfaction of their concerns relative to fire access? Yes. So the, the fire department would have approved um, the current building permit before we issued it. Okay. And, and I'm fine with what is represented on the plans. I'm not going to make it any longer or, or suggest that we make it any longer than it was depicted um, and described by uh, the applicant tonight. Um, 
And then, and with respect to landscaping, um, I think there's some very good points made with respect to screening um, in the rear. And I know that I believe that owner who was um, very boisterous that the original application has since apparently sold the property. Um, and that was one of their concerns, but their successors, I think, would have uh, naturally the same concerns. And I'd like to see some screening back there. Um, I don't want to burden the owner with the 48 inch box, particularly in light of Mr. Gene's comments that you're really only getting a year um, added growth on them. Um, and I, I think, you know, I, I, there's a lot of fill coming in here. I think there's the, the, the cost of this project has been increased, uh, notwithstanding the applicant's advice that he thinks it's a wash. Um, I don't want to impose additional landscaping requirements on them, but I do want to see the screening in the back. And I do want to see the trees appropriately set so that they can actually mature and, and foster. Um, I think this is so much better than what we originally looked at. Um, and I would certainly uh, endorse this application with the, with the conditions relative to landscaping in the car. Route. Okay. So the car route, uh, you're saying it's, uh, I think Ms. Perkins mentioned that it's been approved by the fire department, right? So well, I, don't know that, I don't know what the fire department did. That, uh, it's speculative to comment, but uh, uh, the fire department looked at the application and looked at uh, the request for a permit and concluded that whatever access they desired had been satisfied. So uh, I don't think it's our rule to substitute their judgment for our own in relationship to something that which, about which we know nothing, which is fighting fires and access. Um, so that's why I'm reluctant to put um, an onerous uh, requirement for this to be much larger than that fixed in these plans. I just, and the applicant has confirmed that he will move the, uh, the car that, that we depict in these uh, landscaping plans into the civil engineering plans and actually construct it. And I'm, I'm satisfied with that. But I do think that our approval should yeah. reference that in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, I wasn't suggesting the question the fire and fire. Yeah, yeah. Right. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. Any other comments? Uh, no, I think uh, you know the proposed uh, you know uh, diagram looks uh, far better you know than what was approved in the past. So uh, I'm you know I'm very happy with that. I think uh, with respect to landscaping, I think if the owner is, is willing to work with the neighbors, I think, you know, we can leave it to you know, their judgment, you know, placement of trees, uh, you know, and I'll be fine, you know, as long as, you know, it looks pretty and, uh, you know, neighbors are happy, right? So, uh, yeah, and I'll leave it to their judgment, right? So as long as uh, they commit to planting the number of trees they're supposed to plant, right? Mr. Yeah. So, we only The question about the screening trees in the back, my concern would be that it would affect the view in due course. And uh, maybe something like uh, English Laurel or you know, um, for the Prudus Carolinas that don't go up to the 40 foot range would be probably a very nice courtesy. And I would support, I would support doing that. <laughs> I don't have a problem with the 24 inch box trees or the 36 inch box trees. 24 is a lot easier to handle and get in the dirt. And they are more vital when the, um, in the, in the, Size of the hole you have put in, and then the soil amendments that can go in there and boost them. So, so I'm good with 24 inch trees, and I think something up there if that in due course doesn't block a view from the neighbor would be a good courtesy. Thanks. Um, I agree with the commissioner's previous comments. Um, on the landscaping, pittus farm is also a nice thing that doesn't get too tall. Um, I agree that requiring a 48 inch box, it makes it much more expensive. And what I've always heard, like um, Mr. Madarang alluded to, that 
the sometimes smaller trees actually adjust to the planting conditions better and within a few years end up bigger than buying a large tree that doesn't acclimate to the soil. So maybe that's part of why we customarily require um, 24 inch only. Um, he, you know, he did indicate he'd be willing to do 36, but are we just going to keep it 24? That's what we seem to always do. Yeah. And, and just be purposeful about um, the location and making sure that tree locations are correct on the plants and such. Um, that should be sufficient. So um, it's, uh, would someone like to make a motion to approve this project with, um, does someone want to construct that motion or? I'll take a stab at it. So uh, I'm going to move that we approve the application as presented with the with the following conditions: that um, adequate screening to the rear neighbor um, be installed to the satisfaction of the planner, and that the carve out depicted in landscaping plans be incorporated into the civil engineering plans and actually constructed, um, and that. And there be no further requirement for larger trees, um, and that the owner work with the neighbors to uh, arrive at a satisfactory landscaping plan that will be completed as a condition to final approval. Someone like to second the motion. I will second that. <laughs> Excuse me, are we going to pursue the address change? Yeah, it's not within our authority. I, I don't think. But I mean, does it just not go beyond now? Or the, the, the planning commission can't achieve that, that for you. So the city has to do that. But this body here can't do that. Right. Right. I'm sorry. So yeah. is that something I do? If you can give him 35 bucks. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's the fee. It's a $35 fee. I will send you the application. <laughs> I'll fill it out. <laughs> I think you can you can work with city staff to do <laughs> that along. I can't imagine it's very expensive to do. It. Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Ms. Perkins, would you like to proceed with a roll call vote on the motion, please? Yes, thank you. Um, Commissioner Malisu Ramaria. Thank you. Commissioner Conley. Yes. Um, Commissioner White. Yes. And Chair Zeidler. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And okay. Good job. Yeah. Thank, thank, you. thank you for working it out amongst yourselves so effectively. Thank good luck with your project. Uh, are there any other items? Yeah. and architectural commission. Uh, 739 more adjourned. You guys should be happy because this was like.